Hi everyone and welcome to Happy Little Diodes. Today we're going to be repairing a ZX Spectrum Plus 48K. It's an issue 4S board which is the first one of these I've seen and as you can see it was really broken when I received it. At least it was starting up and I had a picture so I know the power circuit is probably working and I think the ULA is probably working. I went straight to the diagnostic card and it told me to change IC9 and IC6. Those are two lower RAM chips. So let's get straight to it and remove those two chips. Remember to use a fine tip and keep it clean so you can heat the joint effectively without scorching the PCB or applying too much heat. You should only have to apply the soldering iron for one second or so before using the vacuum pump. With the exception of any joints which are connected to beefier tracks like the ground which will need a little bit more time to become molten. Use the vacuum pump again if it seems like there's still solder remaining in the joint and it should then be just about ready to come out. You shouldn't be applying too much force because that means that some of the joints are still attached. As you can see here it lifted out quite nicely. There's our two sockets in place. Let's solder those in now. Be careful to make sure that the sockets are flush to the board. You might need to solder one or two pins and then push on the socket while heating those joints to make sure that it's not standing too proud. And here's our diagnostic ROM again. You can already see that the picture is better, there's no noise on the screen and both of the memory tests have passed. So we should be fully up and running now. Well it was working but now after playing a few games it looks like this. It seems like the Z80 is dead, and I'll prove it here by probing the M1 line. Every time the Z80 carries out any work for us, it must first read the instruction from memory. It does this in the opcode fetch cycle, or the M1 cycle. During this time, the contents of the program counter are placed onto the address bus, and the flag M1 is set low. What this basically means is if this Z80 was alive, our scope should be showing this signal bouncing up and down all over the place. The fact that it's doing nothing pretty much indicates to me that the Z80 needs to be replaced. Now this is a 40 pin chip to desolder carefully, so I'm going to recommend you get a beer this time instead of a coffee and take your time. I really like this Coast IPA, it's alcohol free so it's probably a sensible choice for this kind of work. So let's dive into the goodie bag and pick out a Z80. The same philosophy applies when removing this 40 pin chip as it did for the lower memory chips. Just take your time, make sure every pin is moving freely and it will come out eventually without excessive force. And there it goes. Now if you take anything away from this video, let it be this. Take a look on the right here. Look at the state of that board. All these solder splashes have come from the nozzle of the solder sucker I was using. I guarantee these are causing shorts. So the first thing you should do, rather than getting excited and putting the new chip in, is get some solder wick and remove all of the solder splashes as I'm doing here. Seriously, if you don't have any solder wick, stop what you're doing, order some and go for a walk. There's our new socket in. If you find it's not going in easily, don't apply extra force, just clear the joints out, there'll be some solder left in one of them. If you force it in then one of the pins is going to pop out of the top and you'll end up throwing that socket away. Now it's just a case of soldering in the socket and then we can try out our new processor. And just as a quick check, here's the M1 signal from the new processor and I'm showing it at different time scales and you can see that it is in fact very very busy. That's a very good sign. And we're done. We now have a fully working Speccy. I've recapped the board, done a composite mod, put a heatsink on the ULA and we're good to go. 